Hi, this is Brooks. Welcome to part two of my Say My Name tutorial. In part one, we set up the user interface, initialized the variables, and built the reset button. In this part, we will build the Say My Name button. Now we have two more buttons, and you're going to find that these are going to be very similar to each other. So, Speak Name button is what we'll do first. When user clicks speak name button, the first thing we're going to do is set the global value name length to the length of the word that the user enters into the text box. So set name length to the length of whatever is entered into the text box. Fortunately, we have a length block in the text drawer. We will set the length to textbox.text. .text. So when this button is clicked, the length of this will be put into this variable. If the user enters the word ball, the length of ball, which is four characters, will be put into this variable. So this variable, which started at zero, is now going to be four. Now we need a for loop out of the control drawer. We want to go through this text and separate the characters that the user has entered into individual characters. We want to take the word ball and separate it out into B, A, L, and L, and then add those to a list. Now how a for loop works is that for each number, this is actually, you can change this to whatever you want for each item, for each thingamajig, from one to five by one, do something. So we start at one, we do one at a time, do something, come back, now it's two, one at a time, do something, three, do something, four, do something, five, do something, oh, we set five, so this is now six, can't do anything else, we're done. If this was by two, we'd start at one, do something, go to three, do something, go to five, do something, and now we're stuck again because we can't go any further. That's basically how this for loop is going to work. So from one to five by one, we're going to add items to the list. What list, you might ask? The forward name list. Name list. So what are we going to add to the list? What we want is the individual characters from the word. So we want to take the text that they've entered, the word, and segment it. We have a segment block here in the text drawer. We want to segment this text into individual letters. We want to start at this, which in the first iteration of the loop will be one, and then two, and then three. And we want to go, just like this one, one at a time. So let me go over one more time what's happening here. User clicks this button. The variable name length is set to however long the text is. In the case of ball, that's the number four. Name length is now equal to four. For, for each number from one to five, add items to the list. Number one, do this, add items to the name list. What do we add? We segment this text, the word ball. 
starting at 1, because number starts at 1, length of 1, so that's the letter B. So in this loop, the first iteration, we start at 1, we add number 1, the first little character, one character at a time, B, to this list. We come back, iteration number 2. We add number 2, the second character, one at a time, to this list. That's the letter A. We come back, we add, now we're in iteration number 3. We add the third letter, L, because we're doing one at a time, to this list. Four, we're adding the fourth letter, another L, to this list. Oh, five. There's not five letters in this word. What are we going to do? Well, obviously, not all words have five letters. So this is the default of what the for loop gives you, but that's not going to work in this instance. We need it to end when we've run out of letters in the word. Well, we know we can do that because we have a variable name length that equals the number of letters in the word. So we want to start at the first letter in the word and end when we've reached the full length, the last letter of the word, number four in the case of ball. So we've set this up to where when they click this button, name length is set to four if the word is ball. We start at B, add B, Go to number two, A, add A, num number three, L, add L, number four, L, add L. We've reached the end and we're done. We've taken the word ball and separated it out into four distinct characters, B, A, L, L, and added those characters to a list. Now the next thing I'm going to add isn't necessary in the forward name part, but it is necessary in the reverse name. So I'm going to go ahead and add it in the forward name because it won't hurt. And that way we'll be nice and consistent on each button. This loop is over. We're going to move into another loop. This loop is different from this loop because where this loop, you start at a number, you go to a number by one. This loop just automatically goes through every item in the list. You don't have to enter any of this. However many items in the list, it's going to start at the first one, and it's going to go to the last one. Which list? Well, this list. Now I'm going to set my variable that we called name text to the word that is created by the letters in this list. Basically, we're taking a word, we're breaking it into letters, and then we're reconstituting those letters back into the original word. Like I said, this is kind of redundant in this block. In the reverse block, it'll be a different word than what we started with. So like I said, we want to reconstitute this list into a word. So for each item in the list, which is B, go through it, A, go through it, L, go through it, L, go through it, we want to add those letters to this variable to make a word. How do we do that? Well, we know this variable starts as an empty string. So it's currently empty. We want to use a join block out of the text drawer to join its current state, which right now is empty, to whatever this item is that we're going iterating through. So for each item in the list, do this. What this is for each item in the list, join what's currently in the list with the first item. Currently empty, add a B. Empty, joined with B. The next item is A. Currently B, join with A. Next item is L. Currently B, A, join with L. Next item is L again. Currently B, A, L, join with L. At this point, global name 
is B-A-L-L, and it's not going to go through anymore because we've run out of items in the list. So we've taken a word, we split it into characters, we put those characters back into a word. I want to display that word. So I'm going to set label one text. Where is it? There it is. Set label one text to name text, the word we just built. And this is the part where we're going to go to the text to speech, call text to speech, speak. What do, what do we want it to speak? We want it to speak the text that we just built. So when a user clicks this button, it's going to take a word, break it up into individual characters, add them to a list, take the letters in that list, the characters, reconstitute them into a word, display that word in a label, and then speak that word to the user. Now we need to add two more things to this button to make this work properly. This won't be obvious at first as to why we need to do this, but if we don't, things will get confusing. We need to basically reset the values of name list and name text. The reason we have to do this is if we don't, the user can click this button. It'll go through all this and do it. And imagine these aren't here. They click it again. It's going to go through and do it again. But instead of the list saying B-A-L-L, -L, it's going to say B-A-L-L-B-A-L-L. -L -L. This is going to say ball ball. It's going to keep doing that every time you click the button because it's just adding to what's already there. So each time we click the button, we want to do what we wanted to do and then reset these. So the next time they click the button, it'll go back to that text box again, do what it has to do without compounding it over and over again. And with that, we're finished with our Speak My Name button. Let's test it out. And so after waiting a few minutes, here is the emulator. Let's give it a shot, see how it's looking so far. My name is Brooks. Brooks. Cool. This isn't going to do anything because it doesn't work yet, but it's good to know that what we've got so far is working. And with that, we will wrap up part two of this tutorial. In part three, we will build the Say My Name in Reverse button and complete the project.